precisely it does to the body. It details the importance of cardiorespiratory fitness, muscle work, be it strengthening, stretching, or balancing, building up the immune system towards better health, and anti-aging. Aging effects of the hair, skin, the pace of metabolic rate associated with weight gain, and more, and what one can do about improving each of these issues with a single exercise are demonstrated step by step. Regarding nutrition, the book elaborates on which foods are actually anti-aging, health promoting and good for weight management. About lifestyle, other factors that affect aging include sleep, what's in your head space, in your heart space, one's psyche, one's mindset, positive or negative. My book takes a very holistic view and doesn't recommend that one goes rushing into cosmetologists for treatments and invasive cosmetic surgeries, especially so at younger ages, but instead does things in a very natural way. So now all of us can pause and rewind aging. Aging is nothing but a number and not a lost you, but a new stage of opportunity and strength. If aging threatens us, let's smile at it with an anti-aging pill called fitness. With the pride of having a galaxy of empowered people today in the Orange City, a scintillating evening to all, this is Sindhu Paringa, delighted and privileged to welcome you all to this fifth edition of Orange City Literature Festival. Getting older is inevitable. While we can't control our age, we can slow the decline of aging with smart choices along the way. From the foods we eat and how we exercise, the desire to stay young feels like a universal pursuit, whether you are Swift, Madonna, or Jeff Bezos. And on the other hand, there is a myth that aging only means declining health or a disability. But we fail to understand that most of what we do to keep our body fit is also good for the brain. So let's now gear it up for the holistic approach to aging well, integrating fitness, nutrition, and mental health. Today we have with us Ms. Nawaz Modi Singhania, a predominant fitness expert, artist, and philanthropist. A prominent figure in the field of fitness and wellness captivates attention with her diverse expertise and achievements. As a versatile artist, yoga expert, fitness trainer, motivational speaker, and spiritualist. Her contributions have resonated across various domains. She is a proud pioneer of many firsts in the fitness workouts, choreographed trampoline workouts, etc. She introduced 25 different types of training methods, including box aerobics, cardio dance, body sculpting, slide training, ballet workouts, etc. In 2023, she published the book Pause, Rewind, The Natural Anti-Aging Techniques. And her upcoming book, which is published by Penguin Random House, is Pause and Rewind Again, which has been launched in August 2023. Who else other than her could be an op speaker for the topic? We have with us Ms. Anvita Sudarshan as the moderator of this session. Ms. Anvita has been all over the place, literally and metaphorically. From having grown up in three continents, five countries, and seven cities, to editing Geo Junior at the age of 14, working at Twinkle and participating in a number of beauty pigeons from Femina, Miss India, to Miss India Worldwide. Her experiences in the latter led her to her first book, Beauty Queen, Pathway to Pigeantry, which can be best described as one-stop source book on everything you have ever wanted to know about pigeantry. Today, she co-runs an organic farm and a bookshop in Mysuru while attempting to pen down a few written words. As the topic itself is so very captivating that make that can make us all of us dwell deep into it, forgetting the time frame, I must appreciate the guests of this session for having accepted and structured this topic into a time frame of 40 minutes, inclusive of the audience question hour. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we hand over the session to the dignitaries, over to the moderator. 
holistic approach to aging well. Thank you, Sindhu, for the lovely words and for the lovely introduction. And I really don't think there's much more I can add to that to introduce our amazing speaker for today. Uh, from having start from having started with studying law to taking up fitness to starting body art and now having written a book, you really pretty much have done it all. And I believe you're also an artist on top of that. So Needless to say, we're very, very happy to have you here, and welcome, and let the interrogation begin. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me here, I'm delighted, and uh, let's get on with it. So I'd like to start right from the top, because that's where all the good stories start. From the beginning, why fitness? You got into fitness at a time when it wasn't the industry that it is today. So I was born very underweight, tiny, puny, and uh, my lungs didn't start up. Uh, I was thought to be uh, stillborn, and my father was the one who didn't give up on me, who made sure that no, 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 whatever it is, she somehow survives. I was always tiny, weak, puny, and uh, I have scathing memories of being a young girl in school when, you know, maybe five, seven, ten-year-old girls and boys were made to do PT or PE, physical education of sorts. And the trainer would make you do, you know, things like a somersault or a cartwheel or, you know, hopscotch or whatever it is. And when it came to my turn, I would be told, oh, just please, just stop, just go. Sort of a thing. Um, so recognizing I was always tiny or weaker, etc., I realized that this was going to be important for my life. Um, doing something uh, for my own body, for my own self was going to be important for my life. I wouldn't just survive automatically. And when I was about 21 years old, right out of college, of course, as we all are faced with those questions of where is my life going to go next and what am I going to do next, one of the natural choices um, was law. Uh, which Amrita mentioned right now. So I come from a uh, legal family and uh, I, I was expected to get into the law and I did study the law, but I never intended to practice, so I am a graduate. Uh, I would have loved to be a writer and I never was, but somehow, see, I still am. Um, I also wanted to get into psychiatry of sorts and while I never did, it seems to have taken over my life in different ways and my mainstream ended up being fitness. So I did want to get into streams of fitness which were not there, not available, um, people couldn't access it. My father had told me from a young age that don't do anything for money. You're not gonna need money in your life. Do to give back to society. Do for people in ways that you, they otherwise could not have received. And uh, little girls are very impressed with their fathers, aren't they? So there I was, and uh, here I am as a result. That's what it's like. And I can relate to that because although I didn't uh, quite have the frailty as a kid, I did hate sports. Never enjoyed it. And I, honestly speaking, was quite the obese teenager, which is why I got into another, uh, a little bit of a that's not the story over here right now. Uh, so you've been in fitness for about 10 or 20 years now. What have you, uh, you must have gone through a lot of trials and errors and things you did that worked for you, that didn't work, that worked at a certain time, that didn't work at another time. What have you been your main takeaways from all of that? I've been in fitness since 1991. And if you said I've been in fitness for 10 or 20 years, that automatically proves that my book Pause and Rewind does work. So it's in excess of 30 decades, uh, three decades, 30 years. Um, I, the problem with fitness for everyone, not just me, is that uh, once you are, usually most women, for, for instance, or even men really, would, you know, women would get into walking and yoga. Uh, men may get into gymming and yoga or walking, etc. is it's quite typical. Problem is that these things work for us for a certain point in time. And thereafter, the body just gets very used to it. Even the mind gets very used to it. In as much as we just get simply bored, right? You don't see the results.
can't anymore. You have, if you're born mentally, you're not going to do it. Physically, too, there's a certain boredom that sets in. You just don't see the same result anymore. You plateau. So the body needs to constantly, in other words, cross-train. It needs to take up different challenges, different methodologies of working to kickstart it out of where it's at. Yeah? Just like pretty much anything else in life, right? You're not going to have the exact same conversation with somebody day on day. Words are going to be different, thoughts are going to be different, etc. So it's rather similar. You mentioned in your book that it was postpartum also that inspired you to get deeper into different facets of fitness. Do you tell us a little bit about that? So for all you lovely ladies here who've uh, had uh, babies at certain points in time, you will know and understand and appreciate that the body is very, very different during and after pregnancy. It is never the same again, right? So, um, for what you could have taken for granted prior, you cannot thereafter. Very quickly you realize that, oh my God, it doesn't just come naturally back into shape and then looking great, etc., etc. I've now got to try. No longer can I get away by eating, you know, whatever local charts of pani puri or bhai puri or sandwiches and just, just do anything and it's okay. It is not. You want to look the same way, you want to be in the same way as prior, it takes more. All of that now amongst all that knowledge, out comes a book. So I'm going to circle back to that a bit, especially to the title, because I bought your book a while ago, to be honest, before I even knew about your book, OCLF or anything of that sort. And uh, what attracted me to the book was the title. As uh, they mentioned in the bookstore, I mean, in the, the introduction, I saw it first in our bookstore because we had ordered it and it was there on the shelf. And I thought, that looks very interesting. That's a very interesting title. So, why pause, rewind? What is that supposed to be all about? So, um, <laughs> Sathya Saran, the legendary Sathya Saran out here who needs to do an introduction, who is my agent. Um, and she's part of the process as to why it is called pause, rewind. It was never supposed to be pause, rewind. It was supposed to be time arrest time arrest. And just before we went into print, a friend pointed out to me that, wait, time arrest is some sort of Chinese or Japanese anti-aging products. It's a line of anti-aging products. So you may get into some sort of trouble, copyright or trademark or whatever, and you don't want to go there. Considering my book is also about anti-aging. Um, and so we did a quick hash up of what next it could be, and we landed upon pause we wanted. And is aging really such an undesirable thing? Because that's the next thing that comes to mind when you see a book on anti-aging. So, um, may, I, may I ask you this question? Is aging such an undesirable thing? Would you, would any of you like here, any of you present here, like to suddenly be stark bald? Anyone, hands up, really looking forward to it? Anyone wants to sit here with a head full of totally gray? Hair, anyone looking forward? Totally gray hair, you're looking forward? No, you're not there yet. <laughs> um, are we looking forward to losing eyesight, hearing, um, uh, well, urinary incontinence, bowel control being an issue? None of these sound attractive, right? So that's, I mean, well, I wasn't with you when you said the grey hair because since childhood I've looked forward to a head full of grey hair. But I'm with you on everything else that constitutes aging. It's not pleasant. It's not living at the peak of your life. So uh, with that, could we say that fitness and nutrition is as close as we can get to the supposed elixir of immortality? It is and there's more to it. So um, yes, the old adage, you are what you eat, you absolutely are what you eat. Um, it's not just that and fitness, of course, exercise plays a huge role, but it's about what you allow in your head space, in your heart space, what you allow in your physical environment, more importantly, what you don't allow. Um, it's about sleep, it's about water, it's about lifestyle, it's about not smoking, um, 
mean, it's about habits, drinking, etc. It's about a whole heap of things. It's about spiritual aging. It's about uh, certain ways of mental aging and a whole heap more. And if you want to know what all that is, it's all in my book. Pause, rewind. You also have a whole chapter on facial fitness. That that was something I've never seen before in my life. So could you explain a little bit about that? So a large part of what we do directly in aging and anti-aging is broken up broadly into the body and the face. So um, I'd really like you to just consider this. All of you guys, you do yoga or you may go for a walk or you may go for a swim, be in the gym, everybody's done something or the other. Maybe not consistently, maybe not now, but we've all done something or the other. Uh, it's all been for the body. However, nothing has been for the face, largely speaking. Yet, our face is our ID card in the world. Our face is who we are, it's a very identity. It's what makes one person different from the next. It's the most important thing, and yet it's neglected in terms of fitness. So anti-aging facial fitness exercises, which we do in the book, not only speaks of them, decodes them very well, but you've got images there, so it's really clear, step by step. So all of us have a certain issue with our face. You may say I have puffy eyes, or I have dark circles, or I have um, lines on my forehead, furrows on my forehead. You may say that I have laugh lines, or crow's feet under the eyes, right? Everybody has a certain uh, issue, double chin, lines on the neck. There is a single exercise which can sort that out, which hugely reverses that and very quickly so. It's that particular, yeah? So three times or even twice a week, hardly for 40, 50 seconds, that's it. You see amazing results right away. It's honestly miraculous, you should give it a shot. In your first uh, chapter, actually, uh, before the chapter on facial fitness, in fact, you mentioned that a few facial exercises helped you not get reading glasses. But how does something as simple as exercising your face if affect your vision? How does that work? Okay, that's a lovely question, Anvita. Thank you for asking it. So there are eye exercises. Uh, there, are, there are exercises which actually improve hearing. Um, brain function, there are a lot of them, and very immediately and directly. So, so for instance, if right now you're sitting sometimes thinking, I can't see my phone very clearly, I have to put it back and forth and squint a little bit. Or if you feel I can't see the menu card in a dark restaurant. So I just tell my friend, whatever you're having, I'll have the same. Because the truth is I can't see the menu card, right? Or if you feel that, um, Sometimes you're looking at something and you're kind of squinting away to look at it. Yeah, these are signs that eyesight is weakening. You do these exercises and very immediately so you'll notice that hey, I suddenly am not doing all these things. Very easy to take it for granted, but when you sit up and just be observant about it, and notice that I'm not needing to do these things anymore, you know it's worked right away. That's actually fascinating how the body is completely connected. A little bit of exercising your facial muscles and now you can improve it. Your body is very receptive to you. You take care of it, it will take care of you. It's super duper simple. And uh, now I have a couple of questions that I'm pretty sure a lot of people are waiting for. A bit of celeb gossip. Uh, you work with a lot of celebs. From Juhi Chawla, Sonu Sud, Ramana Tandon, etc, etc. Juhi Chawla and Sonu Sud. Yes. Uh, so who has been the easiest celeb for you to work with? Who has been the easiest celeb for me to work with? Uh, I would have to say it would have to be Ravina Tangan, Padani. She's really easy because she's a warrior, she's a soldier. She, you tell her something, she will just do it like clockwork. You don't have to be after her, you don't have to repeat it, you don't have to get after her. She does it like religion. She. And look at the way she looks, look at the way she maintains herself. It, the result, the thing speaks for itself. And what changes as you age? 
fitness wise, what are the things that you need to take care of? What are the things that you need to look out for that you didn't have to look out for 10 years ago? What are the things we all should be looking out for as we grow a year older, a decade older, two decades older? So Amrita, I'm very, very passionate about senior citizens, senior citizens' fitness. Because it's not out there, it's not available, and it's so easy, just like the other things I spoke about right now. So as we get older, what are the things that we need to watch out for the decline? Some I mentioned, eyesight, hearing, mental faculties, bladder, you know, urinary incontinence, um, bowel control, of course there are other things. Not being that steady, not having a steady gait, um, not being quick on reflexes. You could easily have a fall. Uh, osteoporosis, falling in the bathroom and breaking our hip for seniors is extremely common. Yeah, if at younger ages you fall in the bathroom and uh, uh, no, no hip is going to break. Um, maybe a little loss of dignity and um, pride, but that's as bad as it gets, right? Um, other things are which, um, as we age come in the way, of course, um, skin aging, when we spoke about the effects on hair, balding, uh, that's, that's still all skin deep. What about the issues of cardiac? What about, what about cancers? What about diabetes? What about blood pressure? There's a lot more. It's, it's deep health out there. Um, and I do a lot of work in that space. I don't know others that do. Seniors react so amazingly and so quickly. Seniors are the most important, the most valid, the most valuable part of our society, is it not? With their age, with their experience, with their wisdom, their knowledge, their world view. Um, I mean, it, it, it's, it's our honor and our privilege to be able to do back for them the way they did for us, if we come to that stage, if we ever come to that stage. So, um, I've worked with a lot of people who've had seniors who've had all of these issues, and who've had hip replacement issues, and knee replacement issues, and so on and so forth, and the feedback is just tremendous. It is fantastic. But how do you battle all this? You, we live in a world that's so dense, that's so polluted. There are things that you just cannot avoid. You step out, you're not really good at unless you're not in a major city. The food you eat is heavily laced with pesticides. How do you avoid all this? And to what extent? So every time my glass gets empty, how do I fill it up? I simply fill it up, right? Uh, every time you get hungry, how do you get full again? You simply eat the next meal, right? So it's pretty much the same. That of course, life in the world and um, pesticides and pollution and um, all of that is going to be there. But you're taking care of it with antioxidants and water and exercise and fresh air and being out in nature and so on and so forth. So it's always a balance. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, so a little change of topic now. Uh, I also heard that you trained Indian Idol junior finalists. Now that's music. This is fitness. Usually you don't think of the two worlds in the same breath. So how does it mesh together? No, the two are very much together. We have been trained even uh, the super dancers. Uh, Sony um, uh, is the platform. Uh, music, fitness, dance, it's all creative, it's all enmeshed, and one doesn't exist without the other. Not only from the fitness professional's perspective, but even from a singer's perspective, or even from a musician's or a, a dancer's perspective. It's, it's very much enmeshed. Five. So I think we'll open up now for questions from the audience. If anyone has any questions, do you agree with that? We have a question there. So we can keep in the mind. Yes, we will. Very helpful with the mind. Hello. So my name is Aswan and I'm a leadership coach. So uh, my question about fitness is. Uh, uh, when it comes to fitness, we talk a lot about uh, physical body, right? but what I realized over the years, your mind plays a very critical role in uh, getting fit, uh, you being fit uh, uh, throughout your life, right? So what advice would you give to keep your mind fit? 
So mental fitness, uh, it's not just physical fitness, it's also spiritual, it's mental, it's psychological, it's religious fitness, it's a lot of fitness in a lot of ways. Um, mental fitness, okay, so here are a few things I tell people to do. Can you think of 20, 20 phone numbers off the top of your head of people that you know? It's, it's a good exercise. Can you think of 20 people's dates of birth off the top of your head. It's a great mental exercise. Um, you get where I'm coming from. So these sort of things, uh, a lot of these puzzles and crosswords are great um, exercise. A lot of these memory games, I play a lot of games with my two daughters. Uh, you know, memory games and card games and um, Scrabble, chess. It's superb for the mind. It's not just for the kids. And you're training, you're honing them in as well. You're honing their mental faculties in as well. So, uh, so in addition to that, I mean, my angle was, uh, how do you nurture emotions? I mean, emotional traumas also affect your health, right? So, how do you take care of that? I mean, how, what do you recommend? I think that's such an important topic. And I think it's so, so, um, it, it's a parent's job. It's both parents' jobs to take care of that right up front because we, I don't think we live in the physical world at all. I don't think any of us right now even, neither me, are living in the physical world sitting here. We are only living in our own mental, emotional world. The world we are living in is here and here. That's all. Nothing else exists. Everything else is um, a reflection inward and we decode it however we need to. So minding, uh, being empathetic and being particular and careful about yourself uh, automatically gives you the lesson as to what your young child or what, what somebody else needs to um, have and needs to be taken care of. And I think it's really important to talk more rather than less. Uh, there's a right way of doing it and there's a wrong way of doing it. I think conflict resolution is such an important life skill. A lot of us don't have it. It's a disaster. It's, it's a recipe for um, messing your life up, you know, totally. So a lot of things come into that. Thank you so much. Next question, please. What are your views on supplements? Nowadays, everybody um, prescribes supplements for everything. So do you consider them healthy? Well, as far as you can get it from food and natural sources, great. But to the extent that you can't, natural supplements are important and great. So yes, no, please have them. Of course, under medical advice only and testing only. One last question. Let's go over to yeah, the back. At the back. At the back here. Yeah. Yeah, I think he needs a mic. Uh, hi, I'm Vishishwar. I uh, just wanted to uh, what your opinion is on alkaline water. Does it help the anti aging? Which water? Alkaline. Alkaline water is amazing. Um, it's great for um, cancer patients to begin with. So um, alkalinizing water staging filters, different stages, one to 10, one to four, whatever it is, is really important in keeping the body more alkal in an alkaline state rather than acidic. So that, that helps with disease, that helps with aging, that helps with everything. There's of course a standard staging process that you need to allow the body to acclimatize to before you take it up to the next stage, but that's more for the brochure. Uh, I do recommend this to some of my clients and not to all of them. Um, you know when you when you go to a specialist, they tend to give you 20 things you need to do and my first reaction is, hello, you're not the only person in the world, you know, I have 20 other specialists. If I had to go cuckoo in the head, uh, my problem is first there. So balance, keep it simple, keep it simple. So for those who need it, yes, yeah, so my parents, for instance, both had cancer. My father twice over discovered at Ann Arbor stage four. And both recovered, both in total remission. My mother passed away last year, but uh, both recovered entirely. Uh, and of course, there was chemo and therapy, et cetera, but it had a lot to do with lifestyle, a lot to do with including your the water you're talking about, um, and a lot to do with um, physical fitness. So I was happy to be there and really there. Uh, many times like we join a fitness program and the trainer pushes us, no pain, no gain. And 
like fifth day, seventh day, I drop out on the program. So how do we pace our body? How do we know what's good for us right, to say no? So I have to say you're a lot wiser than your trainer. <laughs> the reason for this is we don't subscribe to this theory at all. You and your body know best. Balance is always the best answer in life. Tell me when you're in a difficult situation in your life which has nothing to do with exercise and fitness, okay? You're caught between, I don't know, your wife and your mother, for example, okay? What is the usual answer? Balance, walk in the middle, don't swing this side, don't swing that side, isn't it? Uh, I mean, that's just a funny example, but it, for most things in life, that really is, I, I need to be here, but I need to be there also, and they're both equally important. What will I do? Balance, I'll be here for a while, I'll be there for a while, right? It's pretty much the same thing out here. Young trainers who are very anxious to prove themselves will often push <coughs> members to uh, uh, injury because they think that that's the only way I'm going to be considered to be a good trainer. No, a good trainer knows where to pull back, where to stop. Yeah? Uh, the body, the heart. You hear of a lot of these treadmill deaths. People just drop dead in the treadmill. Yeah? The heart is a muscle like any other muscle. And when it is pushed beyond its ability, it will fail. Right? So it's really wise that a person like you says, okay, enough. You don't know it, but I know it, so I'm out. Um, it should be moderate balanced exercise. So when you work within a low to moderate um, level of intensity, you'll get the result you want weight loss, fat loss, inch loss, anti-aging, toning, etc. And you'll make sure that you're really happy with it, you're feeling really good about it, you're mentally good with it. If emotionally you're not happy about something, you're never going to stick with it. So all things feed into the same funnel. Hello. Uh, hi there. Uh, so my question is to you that uh, uh, it is right uh, to eat salad, be uh, salad before uh, your meat and uh, if it is right, and then what proportion should be in uh, that side? So increasingly, there is a, that there are theories that you know your salad should be more slightly steamed rather than totally raw for a variety of reasons. I'm sure everyone knows, so I won't uh, get into that right now. And uh, the one third, one third, one third uh, on your plate is absolutely right. So one third should be. Uh, should be your colors, your salads, your colors, and the more colors you have, the better. Oranges, reds, etc., the better. Uh, one third protein, and then one third grain. Healthier grain, not rice, not wheat. Healthier grains like, um, have you heard of Chambora? It, it's available in North India, it's fantastic. English is barnyard millet, uh, or quinoa, or bajra roti, you know, bajra ki roti, um, johar ki roti, great. Great substitutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Before we wind up, I have a question for you. It's a suggestion that we wanted. I'm sure most of us are pretty excited, looking forward to buying your book. But before that, most of us in the hall would have started some day or the other with their fitness challenge or fitness, uh, uh, you know, the, the motive towards fitness. But could you suggest us? with some uh, advices on consistency. I think that's, that's the main thing where we lack. We start, we stop somewhere. Could you help us understand with certain uh, consistency uh, procedures that we can follow? You know, like this gentleman asked me out here about his trainer pushing him too hard and on day five he quits. If you take on something that you and your heart and soul know is doable, is not a, too much of an ask, you will tend to continue with it. There will still be days when you are wrecked upside down and inside out, you just don't have the time, you just couldn't do it, it was a bizarre day, etc. You know what? On those days, just get on the floor and just do even two sets of planks. It's a superb whole body workout, 30 to 45 seconds each. That's it, that's all. Okay? So even a band-aid therapy is better than no therapy. Thank you. So thank you, dignitaries. Uh, audience, I'm sure you would have been taken back a great spark of thoughts and ideas that were shared by our guests on the topic of this session at this moment. I would like to thank the Times of India for their support in powering this session of the fifth edition of Orange City Literature Festival. Thank you for joining us, and we will meet you tomorrow in Orange City Literature Festival. Happy visiting.